Hello. <laughs> Back in the start of 2021, Needlejuice Records announced that they were making Tally Hall vinyls. This was very exciting for me as a fairly new Tally Hall fan, because it was the first, like, official merchandise Tally Hall had in years. So I had to do, I had to do it. I had to support the band. So I pre-ordered the vinyl. I pre-ordered the 45 LP and then I waited. And then many, many months later, it had finally arrived after pre-order and I filmed an unboxing video with my parents. And I think for Christmas that year, I got a Marvin CD as well, or maybe it was my birthday or something. But needless to say, I was pretty decked out on all possible Tally Hall merch of the time. What's cool is since then, Tally Hall has released official t-shirts, Good and Evil has gone on pre-order, um, Light and Night has gone on pre-order as well, which is very exciting. Um, overall, a good time to be a Tally Hall fan right now. Someone had asked me a while ago if I could make an unboxing and review of the Marvin's vinyl when it came out. I'll share the unboxing video now, if you guys would like to watch, of when I got both of these guys. I got... I ordered these back in like January or February. I think they announced it in January and then it went on pre-order and all of the Tally Hall fans crashed the website. So 11 months ago? Yeah. And the thing is there has been like a massive PVC shortage or something. So like all the vinyl distributors have been delayed by like a year. So it's been a while. Yeah! A little sticker. Da. Mm -hmm. Got some. Oh, another Tally Hall sticker! Oh, nice! There hasn't been any, like, other official, you know, Tally Hall merch that you could buy until now, so. It's pretty cool. Yeah! I've got the back side of it, too. Tally Hall, Marvin's Marvelous Mo Mechanical Museum bonus tracks. I'm gonna open it. Okay. Yo. Look at that. They make vinyl so cool. That is cool. It. Look at that. What? That is cool. Isn't it? Yeah. No, they did not. They were just black. Yeah, they've been or investing purple. in new technologies. So, you know, as they're becoming cool again, they can make all these cool designs. That is awesome. But yeah, so that way this side plays just a friend, and then this side plays uh, Mucka Blucka and the other track, Dream, which is just humming. <laughs> which is credited to. Do they have the lyrics to the humming one too? Oh man, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> this one's Marvin's. This is their first album. They're trying to press the second album on vinyl, but once again, vinyl is like being delayed by a year everywhere because of the pandemic. So. There it goes. In the tape, but it's all right. Yeah, poster included. Whoa, mm, pretty cool! Awesome. Oh, that's cool. So they have it all listed on the back of it. That's cool. Probably Mr. Moon, like a bunch of the album art, or like references to Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum, which is a real place. I feel like I remember seeing it on like American Pickers or something, because it's like one of those things where they just like collect all these weird oddities. And that's what the this album's named after because they're like, ah, well our music's odd, so. And Tally Hall is actually a name of a place, or of a place in Michigan. I think it was where Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum is. What's cool is they got in contact with the uh, original artist who made this for them in like 2008, I want to say, and were able to get them to do the art for inside the album as well. But I haven't seen it yet. So I didn't. 
Yeah, look at that. There's all these little different references to like tally ho videos and stuff too. This is Bora. He's like the honorary sixth member of Tally Hall. And then the stand. This is pretty cool. But yeah, there's a lot going on. That's awesome. So let's see. So then, I believe they're in here. Yeah. Yo! <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think I've always seen this part. I've just never seen this person of just <laughs> the husband. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yes, this is going in my poster collection. Oh, nice. So I have all the lyrics here. And my eyes are dying, but... Something that I didn't notice during my unboxing is that the Hidden in the Sand lyrics are actually on the lyrics page, but they're, they're just hidden. Nice. Tally Hall, or Rock Cantor, Ross Fetterman, Joe Hawley, Andrew Horowitz, and Zubin Senki. Nice. Here's the vinyl. Look at this one. Mm. So this one was the, uh, I'm gonna say matching ties. LP, so it's all their different tie colors. <laughs> so, as you can see here, you know, we got red for Joe, blue for Zubin, mm -hmm. yellow for Rob, gray for Ross, green for Andrew, so they have all the colors in there. Whoa, let me see. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So all the colors are the different, represent the different band members. Ties. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. So they have the different ties on here. So that's cool. And then, oh, I just realized this must be referencing Ruler of Everything then, because it's a ruler, but then Ruler of Everything is also a song about time. That's clever. I didn't notice that when I bought it. <laughs> Another thing that I failed to realize during the unboxing is that for the first side, for side one of the uh, vinyl, you have this little, you know, hand pointing to side one. And then for side two, we have the hand pointing to the two. Nice. You want me to keep filming or right, you could probably stop it. Thank you. <laughs> and now for my review of all of this stuff, I guess. I am in no way a uh, vinyl expert, and I'm not the biggest Tally Hall fan out there, but I feel like I, I, I can at least say my own opinions or something. <laughs> so the vinyl, as seen, is pretty epic. I really love the inside cover art. It just looks amazing, because it's just so cool. I think another super cool thing with the vinyl is how hidden in the sand is actually hidden in the vinyl. You have to like lift it up past an indent, set it down, and then it starts playing Hidden in the Sand. Kind of confusing if you're expecting Hidden in the Sand to play right after Rule of Everything, and it doesn't. But that's just because you have you have this little bit of DIY work, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta move the needle yourself. You have to unhide Hidden in the Sand. But yeah, the order, a little strange to have Haiku go directly into 13 and Ruler of Everything compared to, you know, the whole world and you, but 
maybe that's just me being so used to everything. It's just thematically, it just feels different. And then, you know, you got side two. You're starting off side two with Banana Man. What a way to, what a way to kick things off. But yeah, I, 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 I could not read. I could not see. And I had no idea that tracks were switched in order because of, you know, time limits or whatever. And I was very, very scared when the whole world and you started playing instead of Banana Man. Cover art. All the things included with the vinyl. So cool. The color looks so cool. I think in general, I'm just so absolutely in awe of the vinyl. I've listened to it a couple times, but mainly just being able to being able to stare at it is is entertainment enough for me. Another thing is the vinyl did come with a little slip of paper that was a download code where you could plug it into Bandcamp and then you'd have all of the tracks available to you on Bandcamp. However, it was really stuck inside the inside of the vinyl uh, sleeve and I did not see that it was in there and I was very confused because I was like, wait, I thought it included Bandcamp downloads. So I reached out to Needle Juice and I was like, hey, here's my order number. I don't think I got the download code. And so they sent it to me, which was really nice of them. What's interesting with the Bandcamp download is that for whatever reason, the Sims version of Good Day is included, and I think that's beautiful. <laughs> the Just a Friend LP, um, it looks, it also looks beautiful. I really liked the choice of sort of, you know, the dream color scheme of that music video and stuff. The fact that someone woke up one day and they were like, you know what we need? What we need on vinyl is Mucka Blucka, guys. We need to have the chicken rap song. The chicken, the joke chicken rap song needs to exist in vinyl. You you put it out on your nice turntable and you're like, all right, guys, let's uh, let's listen to this lovely song together, shall we? And then you just put on Mucka Blucka. I don't know. I still think it's the funniest. It's the funniest thing to me. The poster and the stickers were really nice because as mentioned at the time, there was no official Tally Hall merch that you could really buy anywhere, and so it's very cool that I was able to have the lovely poster where I could stick it in my room and concern people with it. No, uh, <laughs> it's just nice to have official Tally Hall stuff for being such a new fan, I guess. The stickers are nice too, I have one on the back of my computer, I've given some to people, I've put some on my water bottle, you know, all the regular sticker activities. Overall, the CD is kind of similar, but obviously instead of a vinyl, it's a CD. It has the sort of ruler of everything artwork for the top of the CD, and it includes the bonus tracks of Mucka Blucka, Dream, Just a Friend. So basically, both of these combined into CD form. Yeah, the I guess the differences between this and the vinyl is that everything is in order on the CD, while in the vinyl it is not. Instead of having the uh, inside cover art, all of the art is within the little CD booklet. So what's like the posters in the booklet, the pictures of the different band members are all split up and put in the booklet, the lyrics are shared in the booklet. Key difference with the lyrics is that it's so much harder to see the hidden in the sand lyrics on my booklet compared to on the paper that came with the vinyl. Don't know why, but all right. <laughs> the other thing too is the CD did not come with the download code, but I believe with Needle Juice, if you email them your order and you want to get a Bandcamp download, you can do so. I think their idea was just kind of, if you bought the CD, you'd be able to just copy it into your iTunes library or whatever. I can't remember if mine came with extra stickers or not. I want to say there was like extra stickers inside the booklet, but I could be wrong. But yeah, overall, I am beyond content with my purchase of all of these things. I feel like if you're a Tally Hall fan who has money, this is a good way, this is a good way to use it. Like, yeah, stuff on eBay is cool, but it's so overpriced and kind of insane. So the fact that we now have just these ways to hold in our hands such cool 
cool physical copies of Tally Hall songs. I think that's pretty awesome, worth the purchase. But on the other hand, if you don't have a whole lot of money, you know, that's okay too. One of the other things I appreciate about Needle Juice Records is the fact that they're still pressing these vinyls and stuff. So yeah, it's still gonna be a bit of a wait from time to time to get a new record, but at least they're still restocking it and making new variations, all this new cool stuff, instead of it just kind of, you know, oh, there's this one-time vinyl thing, and then everything gets resold for a thousand, two thousand dollars on eBay. <laughs> I mean, hey, people who want to buy stuff from Tally Hall Auctions just shows how committed they are. I just would never drop that much money on something, I feel like. So overall, from my review of of this stuff, it's very, very good. That's my professional opinion, guys. <laughs> I'm still trying to collect Tally Hall stuff when it's affordable to me. Uh, I do have Sketches 3D which was signed by Andrew there. He signed it there, and that was cool. Unfortunately, I don't think he has more copies of it at the moment, but I hope Andrew considers making more because Sketches 3D is very cool and more people need to listen to it and have it on vinyl. For Christmas, my parents also pre-ordered me Good and Evil, so that will be existing someday. And maybe I could do another video then if people want to see that. Then earlier this week, my friend was like, "Hey, they're uh, they're 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 making Hawaii Part Two on vinyl finally," and I was like, "Oh, cool." And then it was only limited to like a thousand people, which was really strange to me. But somehow I was able to get it before it sold out in like an hour, so I'd be getting that next week. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to see or hear about that. It's quite interesting that it's brown. But yeah, anyways, there we go. That's me. That, uh, that, that's, that's my stuff. I'm Emma. Goodbye. What are your thoughts on the Tally Hole stickers? Alright, fair enough.